little known persuasion techniques that can double your sales overnight. Is that right? Yes. Okay, well, as uh, so you know, most of you know me by now. Okay, I explained before what I do. So today we're going to go very quickly over five, perhaps six, if I'm nice and I give you a bonus, uh, different little techniques that you can use in order to connect directly with the subconscious mind of your partners, of your clients, of your teenage daughter that doesn't want to come uh, at the time that she should, that sort of things. This, these techniques can be applied to anyone, but since I'm talking here today to a business um, audience, I will be centering on that, okay? Now, before we can talk about these uh, tips themselves, we have to assume that we are departing from the same base, which means that we assume that there is a second channel. Today, most probably, many of you, which ones of you drove to come here today? Do you drive a car? Most of you, correct? Okay, imagine now, Think for a moment who was driving the car while you were on your phone or doing something else. Okay? Several times a day it's clear that we connect with a part or that a part of us is doing something without our knowledge, without our attention being there. These things are, uh, let's say, automatisms that we have created, but clearly they are very advanced automatisms. Okay? We can clearly associate it with a second part of us, a second channel, let's say, that is doing those things for us. So we can learn two things from there. Number one is that clearly we think that we are one, we think that all our attention is in one specific thing, we think that advertising doesn't work if we don't want to, that sort of thing, but clearly there's something else, something else that we can see that is actually there and that is influencing how we feel, how we do certain things, you have editing, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> that is influencing how we feel, how we do certain things, and most of these associations have been reinforced by repetition and association. Now, one of the most interesting and powerful discoveries of the last uh, century is that we can influence the subconscious mind to do certain things. Hopefully, when you are using these techniques, you will use them for good, but they can also be good uh, use for bad ends, okay? Usually on a business environment, you will use them to open up your client to certain specific ideas. You will use them to rebate objections. You will use them to prime your client so that they're in a, in a specific frame of mind when they meet you or when you, when you present a specific offer to them, okay? Now, these techniques work on a series of different levels, okay? The first level, perhaps, will be language and how you use your language, okay? You will want to avoid uh, words that would predispose your client to be on the defensive. For example, words like but, although, or however, okay? Naturally, subconsciously, assume, assume, and this happens in a tenth of a second, as soon as we hear those words, we will go naturally to them on the defensive. Okay? That happens automatically without us realizing. So it's very important that you avoid those words and you use instead words like, or phrases like, however, uh, not however, sorry, you will say something like, uh, I wonder if, and then you propose something else. You acknowledge that it's positive what they're saying, but you also say, I wonder if we could do it also this other way, or if we could perhaps work on this area. Okay? You, can you can also say, uh, Another thing that, another way in which we can do it is this one here, okay? But always stay away from certain words that have been associated by thousands and thousands of times of hearing them with bad things, and subconsciously we will be already waiting to, to go against you. It, they antagonize us, in a way, okay? Now, there are also little things that we can do to prepare our client to be in the best frame of mind in order to receive our offer. The first thing that we can do is to prime them with smells, sounds, and sights, okay? It is clear that when you, um, when you for example, uh, feel or, or sense the smell of the pastries in the morning, you have a positive association with that. Has it happened to you? Have you ever felt that smell? And it is a nice thing coffee. that automatically takes you there. Coffee, that's a very good example. Thank you, Roger, that's an excellent example. Okay, you can use the smells, and this is something that very few people use, in order to prime your client, to put them in the right frame of mind to accept your offer. Now, remember that the subconscious mind has a very limited understanding of reality, has a very basic understanding of reality, is working in the back of our minds, is working to protect us in any way it can, okay, is working to 
carry out those automatic tasks that we do without realizing that we're doing them, like driving, but it's also there to put us either in a good or a bad frame of mind, and we can influence that. Another way is to use sounds, okay? You can use sounds and you can use light, for example. You can use images, but today, very quickly, we're going to talk about sounds and light. Sounds, what kind of sounds do you want to use? Do you want to use repetitive, rhythmic sounds, if possible, as close as possible to the rhythm at which the human uh, heart beats, which is around 60 beats per minute. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. yeah, there has been research being done today. We're going very fast over this, so I can't explain it too much, but those are the, same, the best kind of sounds. So any kind of music that approaches that kind of beat, 60 beats per minute, will be good, will be as hypnotic as you can get. Okay? What you want to do with this by priming people is to put them, if possible, in a hyper-suggestible state of mind in which they will be more open and more attentive to whatever you want to say or offer to them. Okay? Light is another one. For example, if you want to be a successful speaker, I saw this once and I was wondering if they did it on purpose or not because it was so great. What you can do if you want to hold the attention of people without boring them, if it's 10 minutes, maybe you don't bore them so much, but if it's for one hour or more, you can have some lights in the background. What you will have in order for uh, people to stay with you, to, to keep their attention, is lights that are changing in color, but they're changing in a very subtle manner, almost that uh, people cannot distinguish that they're going. Uh, in one of these presentations that I went to, the lights on the background behind the speaker were changing from green to blue to yellow to red and going back, always fading from one to another. Okay, that will achieve two things. Number one, to, to get the attention of the person and the second one, to get them into this kind of haze that you want them to be in order to be more receptive to your suggestion. This is something that we do in, in hypnosis. We do it in order to produce positive change for, for people, but we are applying these techniques in one way or another. Okay? The famous swinging of the clock is an example of that. You see, you have a repetitive thing, and we, um, we humans are like uh, any other animal. We can be fascinated by something, and our attention can stay there. This is something that we used to do as babies, that after we tend to brush aside as we grow up, but it's something that is still there and it can be used to our advantage if we want to persuade someone else. Okay? Now, if you want to use smells, for example, I'll give you examples. You want to sell swimsuits, uh, use the coconut smell in that department of the mall, of the mall or of the shopping center. You want to sell um, pastries, use chocolate smell. That takes us to the next uh, little tip that I'm going to give you today. Okay. This is very important, very interesting when I discovered it. I was wondering, wow, that, that's really cool. If you want to break the ice in the best possible way, okay, offer them a hot drink right away. This is important for two reasons. Number one, because the kinesthetic feeling of touching something will help them to, come, to bring their mind to the present moment. If you are talking to someone and they're not doing anything like you, one way to keep they, the audience interested is to make them interact with you. You can do it through questions. But if you can make them touch something, you have one more level of their attention there with you. Okay? It's very important if you want to persuade anyone of anything that you bring them right there to the present moment so that they're paying attention. First, you want their conscious attention. But then, it's not so important as they will get into this hyper-suggestible state in which you can give them positive suggestions for change, hopefully for a good change. Now, you don't only give them a hot drink, you don't give them any hot drink. Most probably in this country people will give you tea or coffee, okay? There has been research that demonstrates that the best hot drink to give to someone is hot chocolate, okay? Uh, once we were uh, going to, to organize an event here in Bristol, we're going to do it in London, but definitely this is one of the things that I'm going to do. When the attendees come, I'm not going to give them coffee or tea. There is going to be only hot chocolate there. Okay? Why? Because it's not only warm, but it's a, a kind of drink that we associate with good things. Okay? It's very important in anything related to the subconscious mind that you stay away from the extremes. Okay? You want to approach and use things that will attract the most people, okay? Most people will like chocolate or will have positive associations with chocolate. 
Remember now when I say that you would like to engage with as many senses as possible of the person as well, you have the smell of the chocolate coming because it's a hot drink. So you have them holding something that is warm, that will bring their attention to this moment, and most people have good associations with the smell of chocolate. Okay? That's another one that is very interesting, very important. The other one is to use images of human beings. If possible, try to avoid using avatars or anything like that for any of your promotion. Okay? If possible, if you can, try to avoid the temptation to use yourself as a model. Okay? Always use human beings that embody the values of your company or business and make them look in the direction of the message that you want people to see. Okay? If you have a beautiful model, which may not be so advisable that you use a beautiful model because it may distract the viewer or the reader of your website too much from what you want, okay? maybe an average looking person will be okay. okay? You want them looking directly on the photo on the website, perhaps to the message that you want people. You don't want them looking at you because then you will tend to naturally look subconsciously. We are attracted, like the face tracking uh, systems in, in cameras nowadays, we go straight to faces right away. We don't think about this. This subconscious has been reinforced by association and repetition. Okay? So you want to use human beings as much as possible, make them look at the camera if possible, because those are the figures, the images that attract the most attention to human beings. And if not, make them look at the message or wherever you want to to, to, to br bring the attention of people to. Okay, the third one is something that I saw uh, recently, but I knew from before. It's something very, very simple, very quick, okay? But it's good to remember if you sell physical objects of any kind, okay? Use mirrors behind them. Use mirrors behind them. And if you're, you're, you're selling food of any kind, for example, fruits and vegetables, the typical example, do you know why they put ice on the supermarket is not only uh, to make it look fresh, which is, it is for that and it is very important, but it's also because it reflects the light. The light is very important, use as much light as possible. Very important, these things in a way seem like common sense, but remember that a lot of people are not doing these things. Today, if we are on this place, they painted the, the, um, the uh, walls in brown. Is this the best color for this? Maybe not. You see, uh, some people already say this is not the best color for this. Colors have very strong either positive or negative associations in our minds, and it's important that we also explore the power of color. Okay? The fifth one, very quickly, is to see people at the right time, when they're already prime without you to take uh, to be either in a hypersuggestible state or at least more open to whatever you want to offer, okay? When are we the most open? When we are the most happy, okay? <coughs> when are you happier? Before or after lunch? What do you think? Have you ever thought about it? Have you, have you ever thought about how uncomfortable sometimes you feel before lunch and how good you feel after a good lunch? Have you ever thought about that? Nobody ever realized it, only me here? <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's because of my body, but right after I eat, I'm like, mmm, there's something missing, okay? That is uh, associated with a drop in the glucose levels in our brain, okay? The brain is saying, it's very fine with the stomach, are we full, how are we feeling, and sending the message back to the stomach, and then we go for food. That's how we, we get hungry and how we go for food, okay? So it is very important that you find out as much as possible at what time people have lunch. Therefore, that will be just about 45 minutes, one hour later, will be the peak, the best possible moment to make them an offer or to talk with them about anything. I'll always try to maximize my chances of being successful in anything I do, and I hope that you do the same, okay? If knowing this little, tip, this little tip will be useful for you, why not applying it? Why not starting to pay attention to these little things knowing that they have a lot more meaning than you ever thought? Okay? There are a lot more things to talk about, but basically I wanted to leave some uh, room for questions here. Okay? Because this is a, a subject that I find fascinating. There are a lot more things that I, that I could talk uh, about here how color affects shopping habits, how certain colors 
are associated with uh, people that want to save money or people that want to that are open to spend more money in a more impulsive kind of way we could talk about how to use language in much deeper ways but basically the most important thing for you to remember is that we have the second channel that second channel is always on and that second channel is a machine of creating associations that will either be positive or negative and that everything counts when you meet a person that person is not only having in their minds consciously and subconsciously the associations that they may be having in that moment with you but you are being associated with anything else that is happening in the environment to that person in that moment or in the previous hours so it's very important to take control of this to remember it and to target your message so that you are never associated with anything bad and you are always associated with any kind of good positive stimuli that you can. Thank you. Any question? We have got time for questions. I've got a question. Yes, sir. Well, two questions. One, you, you mentioned about uh, sounds. Yes. Now, if you're in a, an office environment, like most of the time I am, if yes. I then stick on some kind of music in the background while I'm talking, Justin is, is a bit of Justin Bieber or you know, whatever, <laughs> a bit of Kylie. Um, yeah. how, how would you approach that? Or is it the sound it, of it how depends. you're talking? Are, 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 you, are you asking what is the best music just to be in your office or what is the best music to have in the background well, in how, order how to persuade someone? How can I create sound? Else? You mentioned sound is a... But if you're in an office environment, you wouldn't expect to be listening to music, would you? Uh, it depends, it's up to you. If you are in a retail environment, it will be easier. If you are in, um, in a catering environment like this one, it will be easier as well. There's absolutely no reason why we should be in absolute silence right now. I'm a bit surprised about that. Okay, They're not using one of these channels that we can use to influence people, to set them in a good positive frame of mind. Okay, If you are doing it in an office and you want to influence people, definitely it would be a good idea to have some sort of music in the background. If you compose it yourself in the best in the best of cases <laughs> you, you want to follow that beat that will be in between 60 to 70 and nothing that is too distracting and if possible nothing with lyrics okay so nothing that is too quiet before 60 beats per minute will be too quiet people the way that that will influence the subconscious is that it will make people feel heavier after they've been exposed for some time to that music okay anything m much higher than that will make them kind of hyperactive hyperactive so it's important to avoid it any, where was the second question? Uh, the other question you mentioned about hot drinks. Yeah. What, I always offer my clients a drink, tea, coffee, or water. Yeah. Are you now saying that I shouldn't offer them water? Mm. No, I'm not saying that you should not do something. I'm saying that if you do something else and you research on this, you may discover that there may be something better. Right. So I'm not saying that anything that you're doing is wrong. I'm not saying that anything that any of you are doing is wrong. I'm just telling you, look, this exists. And if you want to do a little bit more research on this, you will find that it's interesting and you can apply it to your business. Does it mean that you're doing anything wrong? Not necessarily. Does it mean that it's better to either give them chocolate or give them nothing? No. If you don't have chocolate, don't give, give them tea, coffee, something else. Okay. Yeah, different. Okay. Well, but you see what happens is that with tea, coffee, with the average thing, you also, um, you're getting into a risk. You associate your, uh, yourself with whatever the person has associated with that. You must manage the environment, the expectations, and any kind of influence that that person is feeling in that moment as much as you can. And you must pay attention to everything that goes around that person in that moment. Anything else? You, you mentioned about, um, about, about an hour after lunch. I don't know about anyone else, but after you eat, you feel really tired. So yeah. after, how, after lunch, you after feel you eat, so. yeah, you feel yeah. quite tired. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I consider it's a very good question. Thank you. I, I consider that the best time to approach people is one hour after lunch, before that kind of heaviness sets in, which on average for most people is around one and a half hours to two hours. Okay, it's like if we have lunch at two, at 2.45, 3 o'clock, we will be in the best possible frame of mind to be open, receptive and positive to any kind of offer. If we approach you at 4, then it's when we are already, we are already, you see, our mind is already on what is going to happen after, which is at 5 we're leaving. So your level of attention won't, won't be the same and you will already be feeling a little bit more heavy. Thank you.
That's not good. That's not something that you want to be associated with. Whereas the worst possible moment is before lunch when people are feeling the drug gluc the, the levels of glucose drop, and then people are feeling irritable. They're they're they lack concentration. Uh, they will not remember anything you tell them. It's a very ma bad moment to do it. Mm -hmm. One last question yeah. for John. Last question. Yeah, well, I mean, Michael Douglas said in Wall Street that lunch is for wimps. <laughs> uh, that's the first thing. Second thing is, um, when I stuck in business years and years ago, um, lunch was a common thing, you know. Yeah. But now, um, I think lunch hours have almost gone out of business in the in the UK. I mean, I know that it's different in Spain and France because you sometimes you're dealing with Spain and France, you have to wait for them to come up back from lunch, all right? And that could be an hour or two hours. But in the UK, most people work through the old-fashioned lunch hour. I suggest it's almost gone, isn't it? Or would you all stop for an hour or two hours for lunch? No, 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 no I'm not, I'm not saying, saying you know, uh, that's uh, the way business has developed in, an, uh, you know, in, in the UK in recent years. It's very interesting that, that uh, you make a point of how things are here because Perhaps you are assuming that I am coming from a different culture, therefore uh, associating things. Very interesting. Well, no, I'm just being <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. That's fine. Uh, but I have lived in this country for several years yeah. now. I know exactly what you mean, and uh, I see more than 400 clients a, a, a year. So I know how this society works. I know that most people here uh, have a packet of crisps, a, a fizzy drink, and a sandwich for lunch, and they have that lunch on the desk as they eat. Okay. In any case, that's your lunch, that's your food, and you're going to feel better after lunch rather than before lunch. So, <laughs> it's not my place. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so well Thank you very much. Okay, we now come to three one two appointments. This is where you find out more about each other in a two-way conversation. Remember at 4M every connection has value.